preview of what we might hear, we are joined by Michael Waldman. He is, of course, the president of the Brennan Center for Justice at NYU and the former director of speech writing for President Bill Clinton. He wrote or edited four State of the Union addresses. Good morning, Michael. Good morning. Good Those addresses morning. are long. Wrote it, writing right. and editing them is no small feat. <laughs> what, Michael, from a president who is notoriously unpredictable, who favors braggadocio and bluster, what do you expect the tone's going to be on Tuesday night? Well, there's a kind of tone that presidents generally try to strive for in a State of the Union. Uh, they want it to be a moment where they can command the full power and majesty, as it were, of the office. And majesty of the office is not a phrase one typically associates with Donald Trump. If you think about it, what's complicated with him is we as listeners, we as voters, know that sometimes he can read a speech from a teleprompter. And, and last year he gave an address to Congress. And it was kind of boring, and, and people, a lot of people sort of breathed a sigh of relief. But teleprompter Trump is so different from Twitter Trump, yeah. uh, who sounds not like a regular old president, but like someone calling into a talk radio show. And so, uh, and he often will undermine a big speech like this just within days by, by doing something. Which and he did last year. Two or three days after that speech that received pretty good marks from people. He, at 7 in the morning on a Saturday, which to many of us is an early time on a Saturday. Uh, Not for us. I know, I know. But he tweeted out that uh, President Obama had had his phones tapped and we were off to the races again. So I would expect him to have a, a sober speech, but with a question mark of how seriously he takes it or how long it'll last. As, as we mentioned, you wrote uh, many of President Bill Clinton's State of the Union addresses, including those when there was a cloud of impeachment yeah. hanging over him. We've got the Mueller investigation hanging over the president. So how, how do you handle that if you're a speechwriter? You know, different presidents at different times have addressed uh, scandals or crises different ways. Richard Nixon, when he was uh, president, talked about Watergate and said one year of Watergate is enough. In Bill Clinton's case, he wanted to just talk about the issues as he saw them, though it was the day before uh, the, the State of the Union in 1998 that he issued his famous or infamous denial about Monica Lewinsky. I cannot imagine that President Trump is going to talk about this. I, I really wish that he would talk about Russia and foreign interference in our elections and the need to protect democracy in 2018. That's how I think a president ought to talk about this. As we know, he tends to talk about it as fake news and that sort of stuff, and rather than, than addressing, addressing it that yeah. way. But one thing that the president is likely to address is immigration. We are in the middle of a big fight over the fate of the Dreamers. Stephen Miller is going to be the speechwriter on tap for the State of the Union. He is notoriously conservative as it comes to immigration. Does that translate to President Trump's rhetoric on the subject? Uh, you know, it may well. Um, uh, the State of the Union address last year, the address to Congress, uh, uh, evidently had the hand of Gary Cohn, who's the economic advisor from Goldman Sachs. The inaugural address, which talked about American carnage, was, uh, by all accounts, Steve Bannon and Stephen Miller. And Miller is one of the most sharply uh, focused on restricting not just illegal immigration, but legal immigration mm -hmm. of anybody in the whole federal government. Uh, and it is an interesting moment because this it, it isn't always the case that these speeches happen at an interesting time. Yeah. But there's a big, tense negotiation happening sort of in public over immigration. And uh, the White House is putting out its proposal, which we assume the president will talk about, which is to legalize up to 1.8 million Dreamers, uh, undocumented, children young, who are brought here without right. papers, yeah. but but also demanding twenty five billion dollars for the wall that Mexico was supposed to pay for. It's like he could be like reading a, a hostage note on television, you know. <laughs> well, we know that the president's words have had an effect on the debate before. We will see That's what happens true. on Tuesday night, Michael Waldman. I know you'll be watching. Thanks Absolutely. for your time.